everybody I've got a really different video today from uh, the ones I regularly do usually my videos are maintenance related uh, right now we're under quarantine so there's not much going on uh, they're really slow I am an on-call this weekend I had a couple of calls but I'm not really going to people's apartment and it's a really really big emergency today I've got a video about watches I grew up with a my dad's a watchmaker and my grandfather was a watchmaker his, my dad's dad of course um, his brothers my cousins so I grew up in a watchmaker's family. Um, I, I learned this trade a long time ago when I was a kid and I was not really too interested in it but sooner or later it caught on to me and I did have a couple of watch repair shops and I, I did buy some watches for me. Um, a lot of watches I've had before I've sold and but this is the collection that I've kept right now. A lot of these, most of these I bought at pawn shops. I hardly ever pay retail. There's only one watch here that I paid retail for because it's a watch I really really wanted. Other than that, all these watches are either I bought them broken or I bought them at, at a pawn shop or uh, some kind of a deal with somebody. So I'm going to give you guys a tour of my watch collection. I hope you guys like it. I know there's a big, big watch community out there. And uh, like I said, I'm, my videos are usually about maintenance, but this video today is about watches. Don't, remember, don't forget to stay safe out there with uh, all this quarantine. Uh, right now I'm, I'm staying home and staying busy. This is something I'm going to do this weekend to keep myself occupied and, and uh, maybe share a little bit of uh, what a, my watch collection with you guys so you guys can see it. All right, I hope you guys enjoy it. Alright, so I'm going to start with the watch, my work watch, my regular everyday work watch. It's a Citizen Echo Drive. I'm not big on uh, quartz watches and a lot of people love these Echo Drives because they say the battery is lasts forever and it's solar charged and all this. Well, they last 10 years about and after 10 years you got to replace it. A regular battery will last you about 3 years. And it's about, you know, around $10. So you would, in 10 years, you would use um, three, maybe four batteries. At $10, you would spend $40. Now, for a capacitor, it's, it's going to be a lot more than $40. So, in the long run, capacitors are not really saving you any money. Because they, they only last about 10 years. And this is coming from a watchmaker. So, you're not going to buy a capacitor for $40, most likely. So... I can buy I can buy capacitors for cheaper. Of course, I install them myself. So for me, this is a good watch. It's got caulking and paint on it and stuff. I wear it on a NATO strap. It's really legible. The numbers are really clear. Uh, it's got a chronograph. That I don't use it too much. Sometimes when I clock out for lunch, you know, I'll just start the timer on it and without keeping a lot of time. I know where where my lunch breaks over. So this is my first watch, my work watch. Now this watch I bought at a pawn shop. This is a Bulova Accutron or tuning fork. Um, right now it's not running. My dad's got a watch repair shop here in Tucson and I could very easily take it in there and get a battery for it. It's not really a watch I'm going to be using a lot. I just like it. I got it for 15 bucks. I didn't want to let it go at that price. I thought it was worth keeping. I'm trying to get in focus, but I don't think I will. It's really hard to light watches uh, because of the glare on the crystal. My next watch here is a uh, Alpina. These are really great watches. Really good looking. It's a uh, automatic, of course. I got this watch uh, at a deal at a pawn shop for fifty dollars because it didn't have the crown. So I put a replacement crown on it. It's not the original. I'm trying to focus this thing, but. Uh, uh, 
Anyways, that's the Alpina right there. It doesn't have the original crown, but it's fine. I, I don't use it that much. I tried buying the original one, and I emailed the Alpina, and they they sent me an email back to go to some jewelry store that, that they're affiliated with. And of course, they're gonna want to charge me an arm and a leg for a, for a crown. So this is not a, on these watches, these parts are really hard to actually buy. I have to send it in. Some guy's got to install it for me. And of course, he's going to charge me a lot of money for, for a crown, for a watch that I only pay $50. So I'll just keep it like that. It doesn't bother me. Got other watches. But it is a very good looking watch. I love it. Now this next watch is a Cordura. I got this watch at a pawn shop for $50. When I first bought it, I bought it because, uh, you know, it, it's not a, it's a Swiss watch. It's not the finest watch in the world, but it's okay. It's base metal case, so nothing. But I bought it originally because it's got an original Tropic band. And it's not broken or nothing, and I, I know how much these bands are worth. And, you know, for $50, watch and band, that's a good deal. And it actually, it's a big watch, but it actually looks pretty good. You know, it's it's a nice watch that I can wear and looks nice. Of course, I would, before I wear this, I would wear my Seiko Turtle any day. All right, my next watch here is a Seiko, Seiko 5. It's a pretty, for me, it's a very good watch because what happens is, this is my birth birth year watch year and month so i was able to buy a, a seiko from the year and month of my birthday so it's a it's a watch that i that i really like it's nothing fancy my daughter wore it just go one day and she cracked the crystal a little bit this is really easy to replace my my dad's got a whole bunch of them over at the shop but um uh, i kind of like it like that reminds me of my daughter wearing it She's only 10, so the fact that she was interested in this watch and wore it to school is, it's got more of a story now, because uh, what happened. One day she's uh, she's gonna be all grown up, I'm gonna have this watch, and if possible, I'm not gonna replace that crystal, and I'll always have that memory of my daughter wore it to school when she was uh, 10 years old. So that's a great memory on a watch. You can't buy that, that's something that just happens. Next watch is a, uh, Chinola, Detroit. It's also a quartz watch. Uh, I know a lot of people actually hate these watches because they're really expensive for, for what they are. Even though the movement's pretty decent, the case has got a nice design. The crown's really nice. And the back's really, really nice on these watches. I wear mine on a, on a NATO, leather NATO. I paid 150 for it, so I didn't pay full retail for this watch. I think for what I paid, I think it's a great watch. I wouldn't pay 800 or 1000 for this watch, but for for that price, I think it's a great watch. And this is the smaller one. I think this is the 41 or 42 millimeter. They have a really massive one. Uh, that's too big for me. This this watch is actually pretty nice. I like the white dial with the numbers that look like uh, old pocket watch numbers. So that's why I kept this watch. Uh, I had bought it to sell it. I started wearing it. And I just loved it. Oh, my next watch is a... It's not the SKX. It's the Amer American version of the SKX. I forget the model number to this watch. It's there somewhere. Um, it's a great watch. I wore it for years. Poured concrete with it. Laid block. Did a lot of work. Got on the pool. Got in the ocean with it. I've had it for a while. It's a great watch for, 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 for the price. It's, it's really hard to top a watch that's, that's even close to this watch. You know, the build quality and the, um, keeps great time, mine does, some of them don't. But they're really easy to regulate. Take it to a watchmaker, so people complain about. I hear a lot about complaints about the bezel not lining up. That's really simple. These are just kind of glued on. You could actually take them off and, and you know, line it where it clicks and then Put the bezel yourself. Um, it's not a big deal, but if you don't feel confident, don't do it. Take it to a watchmaker. They can do it. Now this next watch is a Cmix. 
This is a really cool watch. But when I first bought it, oh, hurry. When I first bought it, it came with a, uh, a rubber strap. And I saw it at a pawn shop for $80. And it's got a value of 7750 So I bought it for the movement because I, I thought the watch was really ugly at first. And I, I just bought it for the movement. And I, I took it to my shop. And I had it in a little box there, you know, for $80. A value movement, it's a great deal. But I never thought, you know, anything about the watch. Then one day I bought these these uh, straps, these leather straps. These are um, Banda. I think they call this the cowboy strap. I bought a whole bunch of these straps. And I just put a, this strap on this watch because it's got yellow here. And it's got the yellow subdials. And I just love the way it looks. I love it so much that I kept it. I never sold it, never took it apart. I kept it. At one point I sold it to my brother. He lives in Texas and I figured out a way to buy it back from him. But I had to drive all the way to Texas to get it. But I'm glad I've got it back. This is a one watch that I won't be selling. I just love the look. You know, it's got a really funky look that not all watches can, can deliver. And this one's got it. I love the colors. I love everything on this watch. Uh, now that I got this band on it, and it's got a great movement of value. Nothing wrong with that. And for $80 plus, I think I paid, I'm not gonna tell how much I paid for the band, but I paid under $20 for it. <laughs> I mean, for under $100, that's a great watch with a automatic value movement. Now this watch, this is my Seiko Turtle, the original. Uh, it's the, um, let me see, it's a 6309. 7049 but this is the japan model because it's got still got the sumo you know they had the sumo on the dial this one's got the sumo i bought this watch really cheap for under 40 dollars had a horrible looking band on it but it's a great watch for under 40 dollars of course even my dad's got a, this crystal he's got it in stock at, at his shop right now this bezel would be no problem ordering a brand new one i can make this watch new it's sluggish on time. I haven't serviced it. I serviced it. I haven't even opened it. But I don't think I want to. It, lo it loses time. I could change the mainspring on it, service it, put new gaskets on it. But somehow I just like the way it is. And I'll just wear it like that. If it ever breaks down, then I'll have to work on it. But I like it like that in original condition. Now this next watch. This is the only watch I've ever paid retail for. The only one, ever. Well, that means I gotta really like this watch. And I love it. I, I went out, I looked for it, and I bought it. Automatic, of course. It's a Seiko Presage, or the cocktail. Of course, I changed the band. It comes with a really dark blue, shiny band that I don't really like. I've got it somewhere, but I put a nice alligator band on it. With a different clasp. Oh no, it's got the original clasp. I just changed the band. And this is the perfect watch for me. Uh, I love the look. I love everything about this watch. I just really, really love this watch. Um, like I said, this is the only watch in my whole life that I've ever paid retail for. And so that means I really like this watch. Uh, this watch I could wear a hundred different occasions and I would be really perfectly happy with this watch. And I love it. Now this next watch, this is a Tag Carrera 2019. Pretty cool little watch. Really hard to take pictures of this watch. First time I saw this watch, they had it at a pawn shop for $1,900. I, look, I looked at it. I mean, I wasn't to buying and selling watches, so I was not gonna pay $2,000 for a watch that I would sell for for 2000 <laughs> so I, I I saw it and it was there you know I looked at the movement of course it's also got the value 750 but this one's got the decorated one and uh, you know I like it and I just saw it but uh, you know I always had it in the back of my mind if I ever need a uh, Carrera I know where, where, where they have one for sale a few months later I stopped by and they they still had it and they had knocked it down to 1500 
And oh, still, it's getting to be a good deal. And I thought to myself, ah, they're going to sell it pretty fast. Of course, it's got the original uh, band bracelet. Uh, I don't wear it on bracelets, but I do have it. So I figured somebody's going to buy it. And I just let it be for, you know, for a while. About a year and a half later, that long. Stop by, stop by that pawn shop again. And they had, they had just marked this watch down to $500. And I took it right away. Because at $500, I knew I could, could resell it for $1,200. No problem. Even a thousand, I was still gonna do a hundred percent profit on it. But I kept it. It's a good watch. It's a nice watch. It's a, I love photography. Sometimes I go out Saturdays and Sundays taking pictures. And you bet you, this is the watch I wear. It just feels cool. Feels nice. Um, just just a watch that I love, especially for photography. It's not related. It's more related to sports cars and stuff like that. I don't have any of those. I drive an old truck, so I use it when I do a photography. And for some reason, it to me this this watch is perfect for photography. Um, so this is my well, one of the watches that I I'll probably always have. Now this last watch has got a pretty interesting story. This is a I think it's a 6605 Datejust Rolex, of course Datejust. Uh, not wanting to to. to uh, Focus. It's really hard with lighting and stuff like that. No, it's too close. Anyways, this watch is pretty interesting. Um, the calendar wheel is a, uh, they call it the roulette because it's black and red. So odd numbers are in black and, and even numbers are in red on the date. So it's a pretty cool watch, but what happens is this watch my dad had in his shop for a long time. He was servicing it for a friend of ours. And he had it there and he was working on other projects that, you know, for that same guy. And he had it and I kept on, you know, stopping by his shop and he had it in a little box all, you know, all torn apart. Originally this had a white dial, but it was pretty damaged. Uh, I'm not talking about patina, I'm talking about damaged. So he had it there, and then uh, I kept on asking, well, what's going to happen with that Rolex? That they just, and he kept on saying, well, we've been working on different projects. When we have time, we'll get to it. So he had it there for over a year, maybe. And then uh, one day, I, I, he told me, yeah, I sent the dial to get redone. I, I never really liked that, because usually they don't turn out very good. On this dial, you won't find one error. It, they did a perfect, perfect, beautiful job on it. And... Um, he came back and my dad serviced the watch, he put it back together. And of course now it looked a lot different than when, when it was just in a box. But it looked pretty cool to me because it's got this, you know, the, the bezel's different. Engine turn bezel. And it's got the roulette date wheel. And it just, just looked pretty interesting to me. And I asked him, what's he going to do with this watch? He said, eh, he's just going to sell it. So I called him up and I said, you know what, man, you know that little Rolex my dad's working on? He said, yeah, what about it? I asked him, do you want to sell it? He said, yeah, yeah, that's what it's for. And then I asked him, how much would you sell it to me for? And he gave me a great $800. That's what I paid for this watch. $800. Of course, at that time, I had a few other different Rolexes in my shop. That I was, some of them were mine, some of them I was selling. And I ended up selling every, every last one. And this one I never put on sale because I was wearing this one all the time because, I, I, you know, this was a really low investment for me, so I kept on wearing it. Turns out it grew on me. And, you know, and now I've never sold it. I'll never sell it. It's a Rolex that I love. It's a watch that I can wear on a NATO. I can wear on a leather strap. I can wear on a Jubilee. This is, of course, not the original Jubilee to this watch. Um, it does have an original Rolex clasp. The Jubilee is not the original Rolex uh, Jubilee, but it doesn't matter to me. You know, it, I don't care. It's a better built than the original one, this one, because the original ones were just really tinny, really bad Jubilees. Of course, it's not authentic to this watch, but the watch is 100% authentic. Um, so it's a watch that um, I always have, I always keep. This is the one watch that, that 
If I didn't have any of these other watches, this is the one watch that I would, this is the last watch that would ever go. Because this watch can do what any of these watches can do. I can go diving with it. My dad serviced it at that point, and I serviced it again last year. So I know the, of course I water, water tested it, I pressure tested it, and I know it's good. Um, it's, it's got a, a new crystal now, so I know it's, the water's not coming in the bezel or the crystal. So this, this watch can do what any of these watches can do, even, even this watch, because this is my dressier watch. This watch can take that, replace that. Of course, it doesn't have a chronograph, but a chronograph is not something I, I really use that much, and neither is a, is a rotating bezel. I mean, this is not something that we use anymore too much. So, of all the watches here, this is the one last watch I would ever sell, because it's a perfect watch, 36 millimeters, and I just love it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Um, like I said, I don't do watch videos a lot, so I'm stuttering and I'm not saying all the model numbers and the case numbers and all that like the other guys. Um, I could probably look them up, but I'm not into that kind of uh, watches, watch collecting. I'm more into what, what they look like and their functionality. And like I said, I grew up fixing watches, so I have a different outlook on, on watches than, than all these new uh, YouTubers that are have a lot of information they don't really know much about watches but they know a lot of information and i guess that makes them uh, pros or connoisseurs and I, I have a different way of looking at watches and well i hope you guys enjoyed this see you guys